Hello and welcome to another episode of Hedgehog Makes. My name is Austin, aka Zombie Hedgehog, and today I'm going to do a follow-up video to the unboxing I did of the Creality K1C and explain why I'm returning it. There's a few major issues right off the bat that I went over in my unboxing video, so check that out first. Um, I'm quite disappointed in this printer. And it seems like some people have had a good experience with the printer. It seems like some people have had a bad experience. I know some people who have bought it at the same time as me on pre-order and have already returned it. So what's so bad about this? Number one, um, it seems like there are some quality control issues. My top hat will sort of lock in place. It, you have to really figure out where it goes and it's a super tight fit. That's not really coming off. Uh, at first, it was completely not going on, but I think I wiggled it enough into place to where it finally seats in. So it's improved, but it's still not the great, I you know, the best idea, or ugh, the best. Hold on. It's gonna take off the cut. There we go. <clears throat> not the best design. Speaking of bad designs, the PTFE tube is actually rubbing on the top. You'll see that there is an X pattern on there that's because i ran a g-code that just moved around the printer i wanted to wear it in to see that maybe after a little bit of time printing on it it would wear itself in and start printing well uh no uh, and in fact the pcfe tube rubs on the top of the printer <laughs> so uh, apparently there's a mod or a couple mods that you can reroute the ptfe but this is right off of the right out of the box it it's already poorly constrained. It actually hits the side when you print with it. Uh, it's not not the best cable management nor PTFE management for the uh, for the actual motion system. And speaking of the motion system, let's just jump right into the biggest issue for this printer. It's heavy, which is nice, but this extruder. This extruder has issues and I, I don't really know a solution. So the actual extruder is really small and it's, it's nice. It's a small extruder. It's actually really accessible right here, but I'll show you something. And apparently Nathan builds robots did a teardown of this like eight months ago. And let me show you what I found. I took this apart trying to figure out what would possibly be wrong with this extruder to make the prints so bad. And I'll show you some prints in a minute. This is what the extruder looks like from the side. I did take this picture. Um, the gears are, you know, it's all aligned correctly. Um, they're using larger geared extruders or um, yeah, larger gear extruders. They're using palm um gears which is perfectly normal most extruders have these this looks fine here's what it looks like when you load filament and this is what shocked me because each one of these gears is held in with a single screw the whole thing actually like bends when you put in filament and you can see here that this isn't even aligned anymore it's only making contact down here and it actually grinds when you put film it back and forth. It feels bad. It feels super rough. It's, it's, it's a surprise that this thing hasn't been highlighted, um, to be just a really, really bad design. Uh, I haven't heard about it until now. You know, people have had their K ones and apparently a lot of people print really well on them, but this is an issue. And I think this is what's causing my printing issues. And will just a replacement extruder fix it? I still think this is a design flaw. I don't know how this can possibly survive many, many thousands of hours. So allegedly at the time of this recording, Bontech is working on a replacement extruder, but this should be kind of working out of the box. At least I'd think. Let's go to the overhead. I'll show you some prints. So this is a print off of my bamboo. This is a flow test uh, done in, sorry, a BFA test done in Orca Slicer. It does 
Um, it starts at 40 millimeters a second and works its way up to 200. And you can see that there's a little bit of, you know, issue here and there. It's, it's not the most perfect extrusion. You can see some VFAs. But overall, I mean, it looks pretty good. That's done on the Bamboo X1 Carbon. Here's the same filament on the Creality. And you'll immediately see that it has just terribly inconsistent extrusion. Um, this is the first layer after calibrating it automatically. It doesn't look great, but ignoring that, at no speed do the walls look good. Oh yeah, and you can see the VFAs. You can see them there. They get better as you print faster, but as you print faster, it gets worse quality. Like, I don't, I don't even understand. So apparently some people have gotten good prints off of their, off of their K1s, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below if you have one of these and it's actually printing decently. You want to guess what this printer is, or what this print is off of. This is Creality's, one of their flagship printers actually. This is the CR10 SE. This is a bed slinger. This is their, their best bed slinger that they've ever made. Running a sprite extruder and a K1 style hot end. And you don't get nearly as, as bad result. It looks kind of like the bamboo. Super smooth, super consistent. I think this one actually has lower VFAs than the bamboo. This is a great print. So why is it that the, the K1 is printing just super inconsistently? I think it's the extruder. I think it's the extruder. But that's not the only issue with the printer. The actual bed itself is tilted. It's skewed. And apparently this is a major issue on all K1, K1 Max, and now these printers. They don't come level out of the factory. And even if you follow their guide, you can't get it level easily. Um, I've heard that there's a shim mod that you can print and shim the bed into place, but that shouldn't be necessary. That's, that's having, asking your users to, to print stuff to improve the printer out of the box. I don't, I don't understand. Um, yes, they do include a, a side spool holder design out of the box that you can print, that's nice. They don't include the PTFE to run to it. You still have to dig behind the printer. Um, also, I found an issue with their clipper config, uh, of many issues, but the one that really stuck out to me is they're not input shaping on the x-axis. They're actually estimating the input shaping on the x-axis. And I'll show you a brief, a uh, brief overview of that. Here's the y-axis on the K1C. I measured this using um, the, the, rooted, the rooted files. So shout out to the team that's been um, rooting the K1 series printers and installing plugins and stuff like that. So this is just a residence graph and it looks pretty good. The, the little uh, peak right here is nice and, it's actually quite a tall peak, but it's not bad. It's pretty, it has a single defined point. Um, it's estimating an acceleration of around almost 8K with zero or almost no vibration. It looks pretty good. But when we get to the X axis, the X is, is not good. <laughs> this is not beautiful at all. This is quite ugly. And my guess is because the X axis is so loose, it's causing tons of interference uh, on, the, on the lower frequencies. And apparently this is hard to measure. If I was inputting this in the clipper, I would be using a, a two hump EI, most likely, with 9% vibration and acceleration of, of a little over a thousand. for clean prints. So it's kind of, it's actually almost impossible to get a good measurement off of this because there's issues with the the way that the tool head is mounted. Um, I'm guessing it's because it's on smooth 
brass rods instead of bearings. I don't know why they went to that. Um, yes, that is what the bamboo uses, but I don't know why that was copied when clearly bearings are nice and smooth. Let's take a look at that y-axis again. That's what the X should look like. So the tool head wasn't really implemented great. So what they're doing is they're actually running a EI test. Only the, they're only running EI and they're only measuring the Y and they're applying that measurement to both the Y and the X. So I've been recommending people actually go in and, and run this calibration and update the frequencies inside their Clipper config to accurately represent how the printer is responding. So that's, that's one thing. Um, and there's other, other things that I really just stopped. Um, this is almost a $600 printer. This is Crowley's flagship printer, and this is not acceptable. So if you have one of these and it works great for you, that's awesome. I, I'm super happy. But if you're expecting to get this thing and, and get it printing well, there's a chance that it might not. So this is more of a warning to anyone who's interested in this printer. Disclaimer, this is a launch unit. They might make changes. They might update the extruder. They might update the clipper config. They might completely change the printer itself. I don't know, but this is my experience with this printer. I did buy this printer myself. I bought it as a pre-order. I was super excited to get it. And now I'm trying to send it back. Um, the process for that is not easy. Uh, I am not looking forward to it. So goodbye, Creality X1 Carbon. I really hope the next version is a lot better. And I will be glad, glad to check out the next version. I love the printer. It's just everything about it has so many little things that add up that I cannot recommend this at this time. So I bought a P1S. This was not here during the unboxing. I just want a printer that works. And guess what? That printer works great out of the box. So if you're looking for a reliable printer that works out of the box, I have to recommend a bamboo P1P, P1S. I'll have an affiliate link in the video description below. I can't recommend this printer, but I'll leave an affiliate link there if you want to check it out. Um, leave a comment down below how you feel about this printer. Did they send me a lemon? If so, then I know some other people with lemons and it's not a small population. Yeah, that's all I have to say. I'm pretty disappointed. Uh, thank you for watching. I typically don't make these types of videos, but if you like to see me build printers, I do that all the time. Catch these streams live on Twitch. I'm actually live right now. So twitch.tv slash zombie hedgehog. That's about it. Have a good night, good morning, good evening, and goodbye, K1C. See you later. Bye.